Um, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead, sir. Well, I was just going to mention another uh, mirror thing that the mirror will shoot you what's bad, but it won't enforce, so it'll let you make the decision to be corrected or that's it. Exactly, it'll just show it to you. you know, it, won't, it won't hit you or beat you into it or anything like that. It'll just show you what's wrong and it makes it clear to you. And then it's up to you to, to do what you want with it, but it won't push you or anything like that. Excellent. Yes, sir? Let's keep it all up here. Because, like, let's say I'm looking at you like, you're a little pale in your head. Oh, you need to cover your hair. You need to bring that home. It's not too much. All right, you know? Okay, Zaka, that's, that's a good point. And there is uh, there are issues of self-esteem involved and... You know, some people just, uh, and they have other issues, whatever they see, they don't appreciate, or they would like it to look like some ideal or unattainable image. But if you compare just the mirror and the way it reflects and tells you what's wrong with you, the, the same way how the brother or sister will ref tell you what's wrong with you, you'll find some amazing comparisons. If you ever have time or, you, you know, you're in, you're waiting for a class or waiting at the DMV, just take out a piece of paper and a pen, but they think of other things of how the mirror is just like split your page in half. One part is how you regard the advice that comes from the mirror and write it down. And the same way to you regard the advice that comes from your believing brother or sister. And then the, other, the top half of the page, how the mirror gives you the advice that it's instant, that it doesn't exaggerate, that it doesn't lie, and so on and so forth. Just do that, and it'll be, it'll be a, a great and fun exercise, inshallah. But we got into the whole thing of advice because we're talking about improving our akhlaq. And a lot of times people who catch your bad akhlaq are your friends or your close companions. And another thing about close companions is that their akhlaq rub off on you. If they have good akhlaq, it will rub off on you. And if they have bad akhlaq, it will also rub off on you. Even if it's just a little bit. Even if it's just a little bit. And that's why the, the very famous hadith of the method of Jalish Salih, like the, the righteous companion and the wicked companion is the comparison of the the bellow blower, you know what that is? And the, the guy who sells like musks or oils or colognes. The bellow blower, you know, this is the guy who has that thing and he blows air to the to the coal and makes it hotter for the blacksmith and the heat metal. If you visit him, no matter what, you're going to be affected by what he does. And if it gets really extreme, you might get burnt. You know, a piece of ash will fly onto you, that's the extreme. But the least cases you'll feel some of the heat. Or catch some of his B.O. That's the least case. You cannot enter where... And body odor. Yes, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, it's... <laughs> it, the, you, you cannot walk through the, the place of a blacksmith and not be affected by anything. Either smoke, or soot, or heat, or smell, or something. You're going to be affected. Some people, in varying degrees. Your bad companion, they will affect you somehow. You know? And... One of my old jokes, Annie, I always, use, I always use extreme examples. So a guy hangs out with people who are gay, you know. They won't make you gay, but you might find one day as you're talking with people suddenly, <laughs> you, lose control, you lose control in the wrist, you know. <laughs> so you will be affected on some level. Thank you, Adam. I was expecting that one. They're just extreme so you can remember the examples. Uh, on the flip side, you can't visit someone who sells, you know, oils or musk or perfumes or scent without getting some whiff of, of something good. <coughs> so your good companion will have some good effect on you as well, you know. That's why you've probably... <coughs> okay. So anyways, um, so that's why we're talking about akhlaq, a ways to improve it, be realistic with yourself, don't make excuses for yourself, get advice from people and accept advice from people. And now, uh, and that's, that's what I was going to say before I swerved off. Um, for you to give advice to someone else, like we said, you have to jump through hoops these days to give someone advice and have it accepted. But one of the ways is to, to make a deal with, with someone. There are certain deals you can make. For example, you might say, look, you're, you're a good friend. I've known you for about a year or so. And let's make a deal because I like to improve myself. And I'm sure you want to improve yourself. And they'll say, yes. They probably won't say, no. They'll say yes. So you say, okay, so let's make a deal, me and you, that from now on, if I see something wrong with you, and you see something wrong with me, we'll give each other advice and we'll both accept it because we both want to improve us. We agree. Correct? Correct. Okay, definitely. Great. By the way, <laughs> you don't have to make it that abrupt, but... So now this is a deal. Now, because they made that deal, it's hard for them now to 
go against that because human beings, they, they like to feel consistent internally with what they do externally. That's why when you do something that doesn't agree with, with, uh, with your belief, you feel uncomfortable. Human beings have the need to feel consistent with what they do and say, with how they believe. And that's why when you tell them, look, you know, make a deal, we'll give each other advice, the next time you give them advice, most likely they will accept it from you because we made that agreement. Okay, how about this other technique here? You tell someone, yeah, he, just like the guy was doing to me in the car, he was saying, you know, I, I love to improve myself. I don't like to walk around with a fault or a flaw that everyone can see, and then my close friends don't give me the advice. So, I would like you to give me advice. So then they give you a piece of advice, and you actually want to give them advice, but you start off letting them give you advice. And now when it's your, and then when they're done, tell them, okay. Now, brace yourself. <laughs> How much time do you have? I'm just kidding. You just say, look, you know, thank you for that advice, I'm going to work on it, and now I have something for you. They're not going to say, no, 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 I don't want to hear it, stop. Because now, this is now, the, you know, you gave them, they gave you advice, you give them advice, they're going to accept that, inshallah. Okay, so I think it's, it's fair to stop here, right? Oh, really? Let me read them so I can pick the easy ones and pretend there's not enough time for the difficult ones. طيب صلى الله وبارك على محمد وعلى صحبه اجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا. Says, let's start with this one. It's nice and easy. What if after you tell your brother or sister to fix their manners, they don't? Do you have to keep telling them or leave them? You can keep reminding them. There's no harm in reminding someone over and over again. And just, you know, don't make it too overbearing and too, just just nice and gentle and, and sweet. Every time, you know, remind them again, tell them again. Tell them, I think uh, you may have forgotten to do it, so maybe I'll remind you now. Go ahead. So it's not a problem, man. But uh, you know, if, you, if you're not doing it the right way, and sometimes you do it the right way, and they, just, they still don't accept. It's not a problem. You did your job, you know. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, you can keep reminding them, it's not an issue. And every time you think of creative ways to do it. You know, I, um, I one, one, one person, his father always drinks with the left. You know? So I always remind him. And then he started to become creative. At first, I would always tell him, you know, like, with the right hand. You know? <laughs> right hand. <laughs> right hand. You know? And, and his father got tired of this whole right hand thing. So then, because he eats, his father eats with his hand, so his right hand is greasy and dirty. He doesn't want to make the cup dirty. So then when he's, when he's, so he'll drink with his left. So then his son has a nice way. Whenever his father drinks with the left hand, his son tells him, I wish you made the cup dirty. That's it. Nice or not? It's nice. It's different. You can keep coming with different styles, you know, of, uh, of giving the advice. You know, you, you write it with a marker on their forehead when they're asleep. They wake up, they see it. You know, you write it on top of their clothing, on top of their homework, on their books, on their laptop screen with permanent marker. <laughs> Things like be creative, people. <laughs> uh, okay. Can the shaitan get to you through looking at the mirror too much? <laughs> it's possible. That's a hard look, though. <laughs> not much, I mean, that's a, like a program. Two times a week, I have to spend three hours in front of the mirror. You know? um, I, I don't know about that. I mean, but uh, I don't know how what it means by shaitan get to you, but. So I, I don't know what, what kind of program this entails, but uh, generally I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, uh, how can how can we become more tolerant towards other people? You know, it's just training. You know, it's 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 a couple of things. Part of it is knowing. It's all about the reward, people. That's why Allah Azza wa tells us so many times in the Quran, "This is the reward. That's the punishment." Because it reminds you, it motivates you to act better. That's why the Prophet Sallam says, Man kana yu'min billahi wal yawm al-akhir falyaqul khayran aw liyasmut. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him say that which is good or keep quiet. Why did the Prophet just say, uh, just keep, keep quiet?